Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're going to be talking about every four star and three star familiar in the context of familiar arena. Uh, we are going to talk about kind of what their long term pros and cons are and whether or not you should be investing in them. So let's go ahead and dig in. <laughs> Now, I did notice some comments on my other video, so I am going to address them real quick at the beginning of this video uh, to kind of clear up any confusion. Uh, when we talk about familiar arena familiars and kind of what they do in the familiar arena, we are referencing what's called either their battle passive or their battle active ability skill. Uh, that is the only skill that they're going to use in familiar arena. So for example, Ouroboros in his main world skill, Poisons, but in his familiar arena skill, he knocks down. Uh, so a lot of people were leaving comments like, no, Ouroboros can poison in familiar arena. He cannot poison in familiar arena. Uh, the only ability that these familiars have access to in familiar arena is the third ability in their kit. And that's why we're talking about that. Now, Shrimp Paler is an interesting classification uh of monster and i do really love him he's kind of a ranged healer uh that instantly restores two percent of allies max familiars hp uh it is going to be based on which familiar has the lowest percentage hp ratio at the current time i love this because shrimp Haler kind of has long sustain and when we're talking about healers uh in this game for familiar arena you have healers like Disbelief that are very single unit burst healy, right? Uh, and then you have units like Shrimp Haler that are going to be very drawn out. So uh, I do think there is a benefit to the drawn out heals and the regen heals and these heals that are slow over time, because I do believe in a lot of situations, Disbelief heal is going to go off at the wrong time because kind of all the abilities go off at the right time or at the same time. And I think it's possible Disbelief's really large chunky heal uh, might not actually heal as much as we think it would. So I really do love uh, Shrimp Paler for his regen type heal or his sustain heal. It's not a regen heal, it's a 2% instant heal, which is basically like a regen tick every time he attacks. Now, he is fire-based, so that's why he is going to be ranked three-star, uh, because we are having kind of dominance of Hippocampus and Suryu right now. So he will be one of those familiars that is at a disadvantage being fire with a currently water meta. Might is in a little bit of a similar boat. However, Might is in the unique position that he's one of the very strong uh, attack-type familiars that also comes with CC. If you guys don't know what CC is, that does mean crowd control. That does mean he's going to be able to potentially stun the opponent. And this is pretty important when you are running specific compositions. You can actually stop familiars from using their active skills if the stun is fast enough. So having Might and Ouroboros, Ouroboros can also stun, uh, makes a really solid front line with the two of them because both of them have knockdown abilities that are AOE and both of them can kind of work together to knock the opponents down. So Might, even though he's fire element and he's an attack type and he's, um, you know, potentially it would seem from the perspective of Suryu and Hippocampus at a disadvantage, he is actually really powerful. And compared to a lot of other familiars that either just deal attack percentage damage or kind of do these other things in the front line, Having CC can make a difference between life and death. It can stop abilities from being casted. Uh, it's just exceptionally good. Even with Suryu and Hippocampus being in such a dominant state right now. You also have to consider that because Suryu and Hippocampus are around, you are seeing a lot of Ouroboros and Staghorn as well. So you are going to have a chance for Might to get the elemental advantage here. So uh, very good, very powerful, especially in the kitchen knife formation where you are basically running five attack type familiars. Uh, Might is going to be very dominant and he's going to be very good. Uh, Splisher, uh, as we are continuing to talk about the different types of healers, uh, Splisher restores 10% of in-range ally familiars max HP over five seconds and instantly removes burn. Again, I like the fact that Splisher is a regen based healer. I do think he kind of coincides and collides with the light based monkey familiar because the monkey familiar has seven second regen, I believe it is either seven or nine second. We'll talk about it when we get there, but 
the monkey has a longer regen over time. So I think as we are seeing kind of in the game and with Familiar Arena, these regen heals, to me at least, from everything I've experienced, uh, are much better in my eyes than the burst heals. Uh, so I think Splisher is a really good healer. I think you would be not wrong to include him in your formation, uh, but I do think that he doesn't have the optimal heal um, compared to, say, the Monkey, or even potentially compared to Shrimp Paler. Uh, honestly, if you're just looking for a healer, almost I think any of these would be good. Uh, it just depends on what you need and what type of formation you're going to be running. Uh, Suryu is going to be exceptionally dominant, um, of course, because of Hippocampus right now in the game. Uh, Suryu is going to completely dominate if paired with him. Uh, he's a ranged backline attacker where his ability can proc multiple times. It's a small AoE is something to consider, but it does land Frostbite on the opponent, which gives Hippocampus 25% more damage. So if you are running any type of fire unit, uh, Suryu paired with Hippocampus is just going to obliterate them. So uh, I do think Suryu is one of the best units currently in the game just because he naturally pairs with Hippocampus and he is that back ranged kind of force to be reckoned with. Uh, you compare him to some of the other backline ranged uh, familiars and they just don't necessarily compare uh, to the powerhouse that Suryu brings in terms of the offensive compare, uh, offensive power. I think the best comparison here uh, would be comparing him uh, to Penguin Corn, where Penguin Corn, while he is a ranged backline familiar and he can delay damage, his attack isn't going to actually have attack percentage associated with it. And while he can mitigate damage, he's not really going to be able to put out the damage. So um, hitting the wrong button there. Uh, so I do think Suryu in that regards is exceptionally good. Uh, Disbelief is one of the most popular healers right now. And I personally haven't really been in a situation where I prefer Disbelief over the other healers. I understand why Disbelief is popular. I understand that because we have Hippocampus, we have uh, Suryu kind of dominating the meta right now. I understand why an Earth-based familiar is going to be really good and an Earth-based familiar healer. Uh, what I don't quite get yet is the single target heal for 35% of max HP when it procs, because it seems like all abilities kind of proc at once. Uh, it seems like depending on your formation, if you're running a tank or if you have potentially like Might and Ouroboros for stunning the opponent, you may not need this heal right away. Um, it may not get its maximum amount of value. Uh, and that's my one concern with Disbelief is Disbelief has like a one and done heal, right? And while the CD isn't the longest and you may get it off twice, I almost would rather have the regen so that I'm guaranteed to get those healing procs off or that I have that long-term sustain. Uh, but I do understand why so many people are invested in disbelief right now. And removing frostbite is also going to help protect your familiars from uh, your hippocampus that's getting extra damage on you from sewer use attack. So I do understand why people like disbelief. I did rate disbelief very high, uh, but I personally, um, when I'm looking at this, I do prefer technically by myself to either run Splisher uh, or to run Shrimp Paler right now as my main heal. Uh, and you could potentially, since we're gonna be talking about him, run Thumbelina as well, which is a 15% in range ally familiar's max HP over seven seconds. Um, just to talk about him real quick, I think Thumbelina is very good and one of the best healers. Uh, I don't think he's very popular though, because he, he, while he is ranged, his heal is slow, so it's hard to see the actual work that it's doing. And I think a lot of people don't have him really invested and fully leveled. And so I do think he may be one of the best, um, but right now with the current state of the game, I think people are really focused on trying to get elemental advantage, on trying to see like, oh, I wanna see, like they, they see the numbers, right? And they see the numbers from familiars that are invested in, not necessarily familiars that are going to be the best, right? Um, and I don't think many people have invested in Thumbelina at all. And I think because people haven't invested in Thumbelina, you're not going to see Thumbelina be exceptionally powerful right now in familiar arena. Uh, but long-term, it's absolutely possible he's probably gonna surpass the other healers and be the second best healer in terms of uh, HP healed compared to disbelief, I do believe. 
uh or boros uh 263 of attack is aoe damage to enemies knocks down enemies for two seconds again partnered with might is going to be very good uh exceptionally powerful right now because you are seeing a lot of opponents with hippocampus and sewer you uh, so you will see a lot of Ouroboros. If you do have Ouroboros and Might, what's really nice is you can kind of counter other people who are running Ouroboros. Uh, and a lot of people have their Might invested in and powered up. Uh, so you're actually going to be able to deal some damage to opponents Ouroboroses. So I do think Ouroboros is probably the best attack familiar in the game right now, just because he has elemental advantage against Hippocampus and Suryu, which is in almost every formation uh, as you do go into the upper tier and because he has the capability to knock down. So I think those two things make him better than Might and better than any other attack familiar currently in the game. And I think if you have him and you're not running him, you would be foolish not to run him right now uh, in Familiar Arena. Flutter B, I'm not too popular and happy with. Uh, I personally have a Flutter B leveled and enhanced. Uh, so my Flutter B does have five stars, is leveled up, because Flutter B is only, the only really light-based familiar that I have uh, for offensive capability in terms of like having stats and being able to hit opponents. Uh, so I do use Flutter B in PvE, and for Familiar Arena, the shield just doesn't really do it for me. It creates a shield with 15% of max HP for an ally familiar in range, uh, instantly restores 2.5% of max HP if the shield is destroyed very good but i would rather just set a sustain familiar in the back line uh instead of actually running flutterby and you see a lot of ebony torixes right now which you know are going to probably win in a 1v1 versus flutterby uh, and you also have to consider that flutterby is going to be uh kind of protecting an ally familiar that's in range so you are probably going to want to put flutterby in the front line so that you can either protect an attack based familiar or another familiar uh so i think with all of this and with the long cooldown that flutterby has uh you will not see flutterby used very much a uh, beard uh so i am actually remaking this video for those that don't know because i was wrong on beard's ability um i did misread it when i was initially going through his abilities i have him as two star i have a couple people in comments from the last video that wanted him to be three star or above because they thought his hp proc based ability was really powerful uh, so basically, when his HP hits 50%, he deals 162% of attack as damage to enemies in range. And then he deals 60% of damage taken for three seconds as damage to nearby enemy familiars. So uh, he is a very powerful familiar. The problem is, though, that he is an HP-based proc familiar, which does mean that he's only going to be able to proc his ability once. You also have to consider that there's Ebon Torex everywhere right now. So you may run into situations where if you don't have your beard enhanced, you're just going to be in a situation where your bird is going to lose. I do like the AoE damage aspect of him. I do like that he's pretty powerful, uh, but I do think you'll probably most likely be running Ebon Torex if you are running a tank uh, just to disrupt your opponent's front line instead of dealing damage. And maybe that's not the case, uh, for most for everybody uh but i do think that bird is not going to be the best especially considering everyone has evan torex uh sparky is in an interesting boat right now because sparky uh is a melee based familiar that deals 90 percent of attack as damage to enemies in range on every third basic attack now this could be really good if you can pair him with familiars that suck in draw in and kind of draw familiars close so that his 90% of attack is damage uh, actually hits the AOE on the opponents. The problem that you have though is it is low range, so it's not going to be a large AOE attack, and it's a low percentage modifier because it procs not based on abilities, but it procs on every third attack. So uh, you have to really kind of weigh in if, again, not to sound like a broken record, but if you have Might or Ouroboros, right? um one you're not really going to get very many elemental type advantages with sparky uh unless you are trying to just kill ebon torex really quickly uh but you're also probably not going to be getting advantages by using this aoe attack you would probably get more of an advantage from using ouroboros or might's aoe attack which also stuns the opponent and mitigates damage for your team so for me when i look at sparky i could see it working in some situations 
but I don't think he's going to be nearly as good as Might and Ouroboros. And again, you may be able to put together a team that utilizes him and uh, draws in opponents and kind of freezes them there. Uh, that's absolutely possible. I just don't think that is going to be the case for most people. Uh, Penguicorn, uh, we had some discussion in the comments about in my initial video. Uh, Cisse, who is a longtime viewer of mine, uh, pointed out that it's accuracy down and blind, that blind actually mitigates damage pretty substantially. Uh, so I did give Penguicorn an additional star here. Uh, I think there's a couple of things to consider here with him. I do think he kind of falls into that damage mitigation class, uh, but I think he has problems in compared to Might and Ouroboros, where while yes, he can mitigate damage quite significantly, uh, that damage is going to be primarily targeted on the opponent's back row because it's the three furthest enemies. Uh, so you're probably going to hit either a support familiar and in best cases, probably you will actually hit uh, a sewer you and a hippocampus. But I, there's no damage associated with that. Uh, and it's not a guarantee, I don't believe, of damage mitigation. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how blind functions right now. The way Cissé described it to me, it was uh, uh, complete, almost like a stun. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't have penguin corn, so I can't test that. So maybe someone can down in the comments down below. Even if that did mitigate damage for that long, I wonder how effective it would be. Uh, and while it can proc twice, I also wonder as a ranged familiar, would you run him with Suryu and Hippocampus? There's just, there's a lot of things about Pengelkorn that I think would be better to just include an attack familiar instead of him. I think it would be easier to work. I think it would be easier to kind of control. Uh, and I think it would be a better overall situation. But I'm curious what you guys think on this one. Uh, because Pengelkorn is one of those familiars that, one of those few familiars I actually don't have. And while the reviews on the Korean side of him are pretty bad and pretty scathing, uh, it does sound like there's a lot of global love for him. So uh, it sounds like there is some hot debate on Penguicorn right now. Uh, Hog Goblin is rated two star. I would say he can normally be a three star familiar as an attack based familiar that stuns and corrupts and deals moderately good damage. The problem you're going to run in with Hog Goblin is he's an assassin type familiar. So his ability is going to deal 231% of attack as damage to the enemy familiar with the highest attack. Uh, so for a lot of people, that might be him jumping to the back line and hitting Hippocampus. And while that might be something you want, bypassing the opponent's tanks, uh, it's very rare, according to the Korean side, that he's actually going to turn around and start hitting opponents. Uh, he's probably just going to start wailing on the back line, which may be what you want. You may want that, right? Uh, maybe your opponent's running double tanks up front and you want him to go back and take out the DPS. Uh, the problem with it, though, is he just needs to be strong enough to do that. And uh, that's going to involve a lot of resources invested in him. Uh, so I do think he could potentially be a three-star, even four-star familiar uh, in familiar arena. I think on average, he'll be two-star because I think people aren't going to have the skill to effectively use him uh, in order to gauge, right, which familiar has the highest attack, right? Because remember, you're going to be looking at opponent's formations. And because opponents have defensive formations, they can hide two familiars from you you don't necessarily know which familiar is going to have the highest attack. So you could send him kind of to his death inadvertently, uh, which would be unfortunate. Uh, Eben Torex, uh, probably one of the most popular global familiars right now uh, and popular on the Korean side as well. Eben Torex is like the easy button tank uh, is how I would describe him. Uh, very powerful. He can disrupt the enemy formation. A uh, great example of how he could disrupt the formation if you are kind of not understanding how he works. Um, he pushes an enemy back and he does 132% of attack as damage. So imagine if he engages with your opponent's tank and knocks that tank back so that your DPS are gonna be suddenly focusing the other DPS units instead of the enemy's tank. That's kind of what this is going to do. Uh, and that way the enemy's DPS units are still gonna be focused on Evan Torex potentially. So you're gonna have a situation where uh, you are going to be kind of put in the advantage. So that's kind of what Evan Torex does in the long run. Uh, he's still good on the Korean side. I think he's going to be a great familiar. Uh, people do say in one of the comments that he was deployed in almost every formation. I, I think that might be a little bit of a dramatic, uh, passionate reply about Evan Torex. I think he's good. I don't know that he'll be in every single formation that you ever make. 
Uh, Dinosaurus, I'm actually going to rate three star, and that's just because on my personal experience with Dinosaurus, he does deal 425% of attack as damage to enemies in range, which causes impact for two seconds, which increases damage to corrupted enemies by 25%. I really like him. He has a long CD. Um, he can be CC'd by Might and Ouroboros, so he's going to be best if you are setting a kind of kitchen knife formation where you're going to be all offensive. He's going to be best in like that third slot up in the top so that he can't maybe get stunned by Ouroboros and Might depending on the positioning. Uh, so he's very powerful. Uh, there's very few light familiars that counter him. Uh, I just feel like he's really good right now if you are wanting to run a triple melee formation uh, with like Hippocampus and Soryu in the back or some type of support going on as well. So I do really love my Dinoceros and I think you would be good to invest in Dinoceros as well. Uh, we are going to go over the three star familiars now and the three star familiars i'm going to assume you have awakening level 10 on them uh, just because that's going to be the most relevant some things to know about three star familiars is that their modifiers are going to be a lot higher a lot of times their cds are lower but they are weaker in general so uh, they can be viable uh, and you can use them and be viable with them but they are going to be a little bit less powerful uh, Nadja, a little relevant because Nadja can silence. Uh, so I do like this aspect of Nadja because it's a silence. It's a low CD. It has 268% of attack as AOE damage. I think a lot of people, if you're free to play or you don't have the resources or a ton of four star familiars, you may, you may look at a variety of these three star familiars and think they're pretty good. I think in general, uh, and I am going to change the star value here on Draggle. I'm going to move him to three star. Uh, just because Draggle is one of those familiars that has a low CD, he has AoE and high attack damage that also burns the opponent. Uh, he's going to have 384% of attack as AoE damage. Most people are going to want to have their Draggle leveled and awakened anyway, because you are going to be using him for elemental formations. So I do think there's a case for Draggle to be in a lot of formations right now. Uh, I do think he's going to be good. And I think if you are looking for familiars to plug and play when you're picking your opponents uh, and you're looking at like grass-based familiars, he could be really good. Uh, of course, the drawback, of course, the same as Nadja, uh, is that he is a fire-based familiar in a world where we have Hippocampus and Suryu right now. So you are probably not going to get a ton of use out of him. Another familiar a lot of people are liking is Prince of Wales. 243% uh, of attack is AoE damage to enemies and decreases the target attack by 15% for five seconds. What's unique about Prince of Wales is he has a high skill priority. What that means is his skill is going to activate before he actually, or before your opponent's skills actually go off. So you are going to be able to mitigate your opponent's skills uh, with this attack percent debuff. So it's a very powerful ability and it's also a debuff on the opponent that's AOE. Uh, so it's very good. The problem of course being he is a three star familiar. He is a tank based familiar. Uh, he's going to be one of those familiars that you can slide in and a lot of people have been sliding him in and using him with some success. Uh, the big question I have though is if 15% of attack is going to be enough for you, that's kind of what you have to sort out for yourself. Uh, or if you would rather have like Evan Torex and disrupt the formation. I, I think maybe you could see Prince of Wales being used specifically to counter attack based formations uh, where they have a lot of attack based damage coming out may be a good opportunity for him to uh, slip in. Brohawk, I don't think you'll see a lot of use simply because Suryu exists. Uh, but if you don't have Suryu, you may consider using Crowhawk because he has a low CD. Uh, he has an AoE attack that also causes Frostbite, which again, will synergize with Hippocampus. So if you don't have uh, Suryu and you're looking to enhance combinations with your Hippocampus, this may be the way to go because Crowhawk is another one of those familiars everybody should have Awaken 10 because of his passive ability uh, for your elemental builds. So Crowhawk, one of those familiars to definitely consider. I've seen some people using Petromaton. I don't think Petromaton is that good. Uh, he increases defensive ally familiars in range by 30% for 10 seconds. Keep in mind, it has to be in range, so he's probably gonna be back line uh, potentially and maybe like supporting DPS. I don't think he'll be front line. Uh, maybe he will be. I just don't see a use for this. He does have elemental advantage, but defense 30% is, you know, if you consider like everybody has access to Evan Torex, right? So defense 30% will 
kind of help your units survive more, right? For 10 seconds. But if you ran Ebon Torex, not only would you have more stats on the field, but you would also potentially disrupt your opponent's formation, being able to attack their attack-based familiars. So I just see a situation in which if you bring your Ebon Torex, you're going to be able to focus one familiar down first. And by doing that, you're probably going to have more damage mitigation uh, than increasing the defensive ally familiars in range by 30% for 10 seconds. So that's how I kind of think about Petromaton is, you know, in comparison to other familiars, uh, how do I want this to work? Uh, Rambunctus, I'm gonna put a solid three star. Uh, he has the elemental advantage. He's the only familiar that can poison uh, in familiar arena right now. And there is no poison antidote in familiar arena. Uh, he deals 328% of attack as AOE damage to enemies, poisons enemies for five seconds, which deals 100% of his attack damage. Uh, not only that, he also has the advantage of being a earth-based familiar in a water-based meta. I think Rambunctus is exceptionally good. I think Rambunctus paired with Might and Ouroboros is probably going to be one of the scariest formations out there. Granted, I know Bunnybot exists and you know, you could see a bunch of that. But I think I think if you were looking to run like five attack-based familiars as a normal-based player, not as like a super mega whale, I do think Rambunctus is quite terrifying. Uh, Worker Bumbler, not a fan. Ranged familiar, uh, single target on the ranged familiar's attack. It also causes flash. 319% uh, of attack is pretty good. The way to think about this is the Worker Bumbler is kind of like a sniper. Uh... Not super excited about this though, because you have like Rambunctus that deals 328% of attack as AOE plus 100% of attack uh, as poison. So his modifier is almost the same, but it's AOE and it has a lower CD on it. Uh, and he has elemental advantage. And uh, then you get like Wombat here who has a 160% of attack as AOE damage per hit to enemies, corrupts with 100% of attack as damage for eight seconds. And it has a short skill CD and it's one of the few ranged familiars that has an AOE ability. So I just feel like, you know, Wombat is going to be better than, you know, this Sunflower familiar. And I think there's a lot of other familiars that are probably arguably better. So um, definitely consider that. Everybody should be leveling their Wombat as well because he does give Dark Attack up as a passive. Everybody should be leveling up their Sunflower too, but I just don't think the Sunflower is gonna be good. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and I will catch you all next time.